this video, we're going to talk about the signs of hydrometeorological hazards. The learning competency here is to recognize signs of impending hydrometeorological hazards, and the specific learning outcome is to interpret weather forecasts. So with that, I'm going to show you a weather forecast from the Philippines, specifically from ANC. Take note how it is being reported. Heavy rains continue to hit some parts of Metro Manila today. The sudden downpours are due to the Habagat or the Southwest Monsoon, which is enhanced by a low-pressure area near Vietnam. That LPA won't directly hit the country, but heavy rains are still expected in Metro Manila, particularly in Pasay and Taguig. Now, the western section of Luzon will also be affected. These areas include the Ilocos region, Bataan, Zambales, Pangasinan, Nueva Ecija, Cavite, Batangas, as well as Mindoro and Palawan. We advise the public to take extra precaution since rains may persist till the evening. Now, Weather Bureau Pagasa warns the same weather scenario will also be felt tomorrow and in the coming days due to the southwest monsoon. Now, please be on alert for floods or landslides in your area. Now, moving to southern Philippines, Visayas and Mindanao will also be under cloudy skies with light to moderate showers. These areas include Boracay, Iloilo, Bacolod, Cebu, Bohol, up to Leyte and Samar. Now, in Mindanao, Zamboanga Peninsula and northern Mindanao, including Cagayan de Oro, will also be under light to moderate rains, while Davao and General Santos will be under isolated showers. Now, there's no storm in the Philippine area of responsibility. But we should always be prepared. Remember last year, the Habagat left a massive trail of devastation in Metro Manila and parts of Luzon. We hope that won't happen again. Pagasa says they expect one more storm this month and 10 to 15 more storms within the year. And that was the latest here from the ABS-CBN Weather Center. Back to you. In the weather forecast that you have watched, you may have seen this picture. This is an infrared picture of what we call a tropical cyclone. So the different colors here, red, black, green, blue, represent the different temperatures. So here is the scale. The black ones, especially in the middle, are around negative 80 degrees Celsius. So in space, a tropical cyclone looks like this. So what is a tropical cyclone? A tropical cyclone is a rotating, organized system of clouds and thunderstorms that originates over tropical waters. Okay? Tropical cyclones rotate in counterclockwise direction. Conversely, tropical cyclone moves clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Now, the term tropical cyclone encompasses tropical depressions, tropical storms, typhoons, and hurricanes. The word hurricane is only used in Eastern Pacific and Western Atlantic Ocean. Although it is essentially a typhoon, this terminology is not applicable to the Philippines. After formation, tropical cyclones usually move to the west and generally slightly poleward, as you can see in this Figure. Now, if you notice, at some point, it will change its direction. It will go like this. Okay, So this is what we call recurvature. So to recurve is to move into the middle latitude and back toward the east. It is the same in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Okay, An example is this one. This is a track map of the typhoon dip of the 1979 Pacific Typhoon season. The points here show the location of the storm at 6 hour intervals. However, not all tropical cyclones recurve. This type of tropical cyclone derives its energy from the latent heat of condensation, which made them exist only over the oceans and die out rapidly on land. Okay, so the intensity of tropical cyclones vary. Thus, we can classify them based upon their degree of intensity. I would like to see it. 
So the classification of tropical cyclones according to the strength of the associated winds as adopted by Pagasa are as follows. So by the way, the meaning of Pagasa is Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration. So Pagasa is the one responsible for all the weather forecasts here in the Philippines. Anyway, going back, first we have the tropical depression. So the strength of the winds is up to 61 km per hour. One example is the tropical depression in Borongan City, Philippines. So this figure shows the track of tropical depression. So this is the flow or the path where the typhoon or tropical depression or tropical cyclone went. Okay, followed by the tropical storm. It is from 62 to 88 kilometers per hour. And one example is the tropical storm Carding. So this hit the Philippines last 2018, mostly central Luzon, followed by severe tropical storm with winds of up to 89 to 117 kilometers per hour. One example is the severe tropical storm or STS in Dai. This one hit last 2018 in Basco Batanes. The next classification is the typhoon with winds of up to 118 to 200 kilometers per hour. So one example is Typhoon Nina. So Typhoon Nina hit the Philippines exactly on Christmas Day of the year 2016. And when it left the Philippine area of responsibility, it became a super typhoon, which is the last classification according to the strength of associated winds. Super typhoons have winds exceeding 220 km per hour. So one example is Super Typhoon Goni or Raleigh. So this is the strongest storm and we greatly felt the effect of this super typhoon last November. Every year, an average of 19 tropical cyclones enter the Philippine area of responsibility. And about 9 to 10 make landfall in the Philippines. In the Western Pacific Ocean, tropical cyclones can form in any month of the year. Now, the question is, how can tropical cyclones be seen in a satellite image like this? This is a case for the FBI. Tropical cyclone can be seen in satellite image due to its characteristic spiral or circular shape. The stronger and more intense a tropical cyclone becomes, the more symmetrical the inner clouds or rain bands are and a distinctive eye at the center of the circulation becomes more visible. This means that a tropical cyclone tends to be more circular and its center will have a cloudless region. Okay, So weather forecasters use satellite images like this to track the movement and estimate the intensity of tropical cyclones. Another way of forecasters to track the movement of tropical cyclones is with the use of weather radar. Okay, Radar is an acronym which stands for Radio Detection and Ranging. So a radar sends out electromagnetic waves to the atmosphere that is then reflected by hydrometers, for example, rain and clouds present in the sky. Then an image is created from the received signal and information on rain clouds can be gathered. So while radar images give more details of a storm, it is limited to a range of approximately 400 kilometers from the radar site. The figure in right shows the eye and parts of Yolanda or Typhoon Haiyan in morning of November 13, right, when it made landfall in eastern Visayas. So what happens when a tropical cyclone enters the Philippine area of responsibility? That's a great question. Once a tropical cyclone enters PAR, a five-day forecast track is issued by Pagasa every six hours. So it's at 5 a.m., 11 a.m., 5 p.m., and 11 p.m. Okay, okay. so a forecast track gives the expected location of a tropical cyclone in the succeeding 24-hour interval 
for the next 120 hours or 5 days. So this figure shows the track of Typhoon Ulysses just last November here in the Philippines. So here they started tracking at 8 p.m. That's why for the following or the succeeding tracks or points, it's all 8 p.m. Okay, so this is a six-day forecast, but on the sixth day, it's out of the Philippine area of responsibility. So together with the forecast track, PAGASA also issues the Public Storm Warning System, or the PSWS. This is to warn citizens of impending wind strength. So the PSWS is as follows. So number one, the lead time will be 36 and the winds will be from 30 to 60. So that's just tropical depression. I also have number 2, 3, 4, 5. And here you will see the impacts of the wind. Now this figure shows the color-coded rainfall advisories. We have the red from more than 30 mm of rain, orange warning, and the yellow warning. It's heavy rain and flooding is very possible. So what you have to do is to monitor what you have to do is to monitor the weather condition. This is always reported by news channels. And of course, this is what most of the students like, which is this kind of signal. Okay, so this shows the class suspension for students. We on the same page, right? I know we are. So if it's signal number one. No classes in kindergarten. Signal number two, no classes in elementary and high school. And signal number three, no classes in all levels, including tertiary levels. Bye-bye.